Two down and two to go for the Galaxy, at least uh, for this stretch. Welcome to Galaxy All Access for this week. Joe Tutino here. The Galaxy continue a challenging spell for this club this week, uh, taking on the Puerto Rico Islanders in Champions League play Wednesday night at the Home Depot Center. It's a 7 o'clock first kick. Tickets are only $10, and parking is absolutely free, so you're not going to find a better deal anywhere for such an important match. The Galaxy lead Group 5 after their opening 5-2 win over Cedro Metapon. Three points in the bank. And on goal differential, they are a plus three. So that's why they're on top there. In Major League Soccer play, they've closed the gap on second place in the West, just three points, but officially own fourth place with 40 points on a record of 12-11-4 on the season. Sunday, Juninho picked up the game winner in the 66. Todd Donovan sealed the win in the 84th as the Galaxy shut down Dallas 2-0. Saturday night, the Galaxy will be hosting a tough Vancouver side at the Home Depot Center. So now you understand what I mean by two down and two more to go. And joining me today is Galaxy Associate Head Coach Dave Sarakin. And I know the fans get a bit confused at times with all this stuff going on, Dave, but is it a blur for you as well? <laughs> Uh, well, good to be with you, Joe. Yeah, it can uh, it can be crazy. Uh, it keeps us busy, that's for sure. We don't have a whole lot of time to uh, sit on one game. We're always looking, always looking for the next one, and uh, they're coming fast and furious these, these next couple weeks. So um, it's been a little bit blurry, but um, you know we're moving in a good direction. So everybody's pretty upbeat about that. From a coach's standpoint, do you measure weight the importance of a match that's coming up, whether it's Champions League or Galaxy MLS play? Well, um, obviously the, the standard cliche answer of a coach is we, we look at each game in and of itself and try to win each game as we move forward. Clearly, uh, it, when you c- have the condensed schedule that we've had, um, it, it, it allows us as coaches to keep one eye a little bit on the, uh, on the future and knowing uh, Vancouver's coming up on the weekend, we, uh, we probably need to be a little bit careful with our roster choices as we go through the Wednesday game this week because it'll be three games in a week uh, uh, when you talk about last Wednesday mm-hmm. or last Thursday, then Sunday, then Wednesday. So, um, you know, it, it may be a little bit of a, of a mixed bag for Wednesday, but we're still uh, looking, looking over the, 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 the roster and making sure guys are fit and uh, ready to go because, uh, like I said, it, it just doesn't get easier. Well, I know the fans that might be listening to this podcast are going to ask uh, who's playing and who's not on Wednesday. Of course, no Robbie because of that red card that he picked up. But uh, will Landon be available to you guys on Wednesday with that hamstring? And uh, how healthy is David now that we hear that he, he had to deal with, I guess, the, the stomach flu? Yeah, David, uh, David didn't look good when he came in yesterday, but he's a soldier and battled through it for 70-odd minutes, 78 minutes yesterday. Uh, he is feeling better. Uh, Landon is making progress, but uh, we, we haven't really uh, selected that group yet. You know, tomorrow um, we have training with the, with the entire group. Today the first team from Sunday's game really had a regeneration day. So uh, Bruce and, and, and all of the rest of us are going to reassess where everybody's at tomorrow and then uh, pretty feel pretty comfortable for our lineup for Wednesday. Well, players are beginning to rise to the occasion for this club. It's not just the DPs, although it's nice to see them on form at this point, but Juninho has picked up his scoring touch. Youngster Jose Villarreal is taking advantage of his playing time when he gets it. Uh, first off, Juninho, can you talk about uh, what he's doing now uh, that's uh, that maybe wasn't working for him earlier in the season. Well, I think it's a couple of things. Um, I, I, at first, from a physical standpoint, <clears throat> you know, we think he's really put himself in, in good physical condition. He, he, uh, you know, obviously back in preseason in the beginning part of the season, as the, be- the first third of the season moved ahead, uh, we wouldn't have said he was in the in the best form physically. He w- had a little bit of a knock and so on and so forth, but. Uh, knock on wood now he's he's had a real good stretch of health he's he's fit and healthy uh so he's working at a, at a much higher tempo that's point number 1 point 2 i think you know with uh, marcelo sarvis uh, inserted mm-hmm. into our lineup and with david it's allowed uh Juninho a little more freedom to pick his spots going forward whereas before he was kind of doing a lot of the cleanup work as a as a deep lying midfielder not necessarily by design but kind of how the the game sort of played itself out now he's made uh more of a conscious effort at moments that count to get forward and you know we're reaping the benefits and he's reaping the benefits because it's allowed him to get into good goal scoring uh, positions and he's got the fitness to get up and down and do that so i think it's a little bit of a combination of those things 
How about Jose Real? Because it's pretty impressive the way he's able to get on long passes, especially against bigger opponents, and, and that's pretty much the entire league for him. I mean, he's a, he's a pretty small forward, and he finds a way to keep the ball on his foot. Yeah, Jose, uh, <clears throat> as you, you, you're beginning to find him out and the fans begin to watch more of him, uh, when you look at him uh, off the field, he's not a tall kid. He kind of has a square body, doesn't maybe necessarily look as though he's going to be the, the quickest or fastest. But well, when that's you better watch than him, being round like me. So yeah, Joe, good? very much so. <laughs> uh, he uh, he uh, has tremendous leaping ability, good timing. He's got uh, a very uh, gifted left foot when he has a moment to, to have a look at goal. And uh, he reads the game well for a young kid. Uh, to perform under the spotlight light like he did uh, is pretty impressive, and uh, uh, we we haven't seen the best of Jose yet. We're just getting a little bit of a snippet here and there, but it's wonderful to have a young kid with energy like that to be able to come into a game like yesterday against Dallas and make a difference. At some point, though, there is a learning curve with a young player like that, and he, he might hit a bump in the road, and we hope it's in the off season, but uh, how do you handle that as as a coach? Do you just go out and say, just go play and have a good time, and and we'll we'll talk about the lessons later? Well, it's a little bit of both, but I think uh, the less pressure that he feels from the coaching staff and and, and the players, the better. Uh, young kids, like if we've alluded to, you know, mm-hmm. this is new to them. Uh, in some ways, they're very fresh and. Uh, not uh, poisoned by too much coaching, so we don't want to overstep that. I think uh, he's got these instincts that we want to encourage him to use, and uh, uh, there is a learning curve, no question about it. He learns every day in training, and um, he'll learn in the games that he plays, and he's not the finished product by any means, but I think he knows that, and that's the quote. That's the good thing about Jose. He knows there's more uh, more to learn and and more to, uh, room to grow, and uh, that's important for a young player. And he's he's at that point. Dave, how big was Sunday's win against Dallas? Because if you draw or lose, it's certainly a missed opportunity, is it not? Yeah, no question about it. Yeah, it was it was very very big, uh, Joe, for obvious reasons. And um, you know, we treated it uh, at least. You know, we tried to come across with the group that we didn't call it a playoff game, but. W- I think our group understands there's eight games left and uh, six out of those eight are at home and Dallas started that run and it it was uh, very important that we continue to uh, enlarge the gap between the teams that are trying to catch us. But I like Bruce's quote where he was looking at uh, this as a way to catch some of the teams above us as well and that's the other reason we, or the other, you know, way we looked at it as well. But Dallas we were a little concerned with because they were coming in uh, in good form and uh, it was a great performance by us, an important win, very important. You know, I thought you guys killed off Dallas when you beat them one nothing in the heat in Dallas, but uh, credit to them, they got themselves back into the playoff race, and I know this is a setback for them, mm-hmm. but I can't say that they're out of the playoff picture just because of the fact they've been resilient, and I'm not so sure last week's, or this week's proponent, I should say, uh, you know they're in fifth place now. They have to be looking over their shoulder. No, you know it, until you're mathematically out of it, yeah. you keep plugging away. And Dallas, by no means, is out of it. I think you know from from our standpoint, like I said, it's it, it's a nice it, it enlarges the gap a little bit. Uh, but you know if I'm a Dallas player, certainly uh, you know there's still hope. I know that for goalkeepers and for head coaches and the entire coaching staff, a clean sheet always puts a smile on their face mm-hmm. after a game. And uh, I think for lack of a better uh, description here, two players benefited the most on Omar's return. Of course, Omar coming back into form, the entire team, of course, but uh, two players that come to mind. I think for Josh Saunders in goal, things have gone very simple for him to just play the goalkeeping position and manage his 18-yard box. And another player who I feel that uh, the shackles have been taken off of him is A.J. De La Garza because he can actually be A.J. De La Garza out there. Is that a fair description? Yeah, I would say so. I think you know, there's no there's no secret that having a healthy Omar uh, and, and our back line that's very familiar with one another from last year and the championship form they had, uh, it, it makes everybody's job easier. And um, I think I'll always say, you know, defending is a collective mentality. So I think as a starting point, you know, from the front to the back as a group, we, we made it pretty hard on Dallas. But when you sort of look at the micro part of this and, and really talk about the back four, you're talking about a group that has a lot of minutes together, and, and Omar now is rounding into better form. He's not there at 100%, but 
we all feel he's moving in a really good direction. And uh, so when you have that, now you have a, even less pressure uh, on the goalkeeper. Uh, it minimizes those moments that uh, players on other teams can break through. And I think Josh had arguably his, his best mm-hmm. game yesterday, not so much from uh, dramatic saves, uh, but just his movement, his commitment in the box, coming for balls, organizing, breaking up that key play when uh, David Ferreira right. got through. Uh, I thought he was real sharp, and uh, this is the perfect time for all of that to get to, to get better. You know, going back to Champions League, and you know, I never thought I'd like any referees, but I was welcome to see MLS officials on Sunday. But you never know what you're going to get when you go into an international tournament. And uh, at some point, I mean, these guys are all doing their job out there, and they're trying to do it the best of their ability. But why do you think it's different, so different, uh, from an MLS game to an international game as far as officiating is concerned? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, the, the 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 quick answer for me, in some ways, it it's a cultural difference. And when I say that, I don't mean it in a you know biased way. I think it's the reality that you you know you get referees from uh, different uh, parts of Concacaf. So, for instance, whether it's Mexico or the Caribbean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Central America. Uh, they have their own uh, way of managing uh, a game and, and how they um, administer their, or impose, I should say, their their effect on a game. And um, unfortunately, uh, well, that's not the right term, unfortunately. The reality is that uh, that is what we face. Mm-hmm. And you know the rules don't change the rules of soccer don't change you know a foul is a foul and a kick is a kick but the way it's interpreted and the way it's enforced is very different in CONCACAF with uh, referees outside of our region and uh, we don't go into these games naive you know so the, the, even the other night we knew we had to be on good behavior we knew how they would sort of manage the game and yet uh, you know your emotions take over and um, Unfortunately, you know, uh, they uh, adhere to a very strict code, and uh, we have to be a little more disciplined as we move along. Well, you had to arrest somebody in these games, so Robbie Robbie raised his hand, I guess, in this regard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he didn't understand Robbie's English. That's what it was, the Irish accent. Like the fool. Exactly. Champions League is Wednesday night at the Home Depot Center. Galaxy at home to Puerto Rico. That's a 7 o'clock start. All right, last question. Vancouver comes in Saturday night, another playoff-type game against a team that in their young history has yet to win a game against the Galaxy. And I know on paper that's a nice stat to have. But this is also a club that's been hanging around the top of the conference all season long, and they've added some reinforcements, and we saw Barry Robson when we were up in Vancouver, and I think that's a very good player that they've added. Very good player. No, uh, uh, we respect Vancouver very much, and uh, you're right. They added Kenny Miller, Barry Robson. Um, they have a, a very solid lineup, and, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a, a very difficult opponent, no question about it, and they're organized as well, so... You know, it's going to be another game where uh, we have to be uh, teams like a Vancouver bring their best, and we have to be that much better at home, and we expect a hard match. Galaxy home to Vancouver Saturday. Check out LAGalaxy.com for tickets or call 877-3-GALAXY. Dave, thank you for taking the time, and thank you for taking on so many different topics today. Always a pleasure, Joe. Thank you. For associate head coach Dave Sarakin, Joe Tutino saying thank you for making Galaxy All Access part of your day.